the TC Spark Mini Booster Pedal. What is it? And do you really need one? Hello viewer, my name's Stu and here's hoping the new year opens new doors for you in this challenging world that we live in. Um, got my new Christmas jumper on here. As always, I recommend you go to my channel playlist for a range of videos covering my journey back to playing and recording guitar. And a big thank you uh, to all who take the time to subscribe, like, share and comment. I really do appreciate that. A big thank you to those that have sent pics of uh, your gear collections. Always interesting to hear the stories behind those, so keep them coming. Coming up at one, the pedal and its specifications. Number two, what it sounds like. Number three, points of interest. Number four, my likes and dislikes. And number five, conclusion, my final remarks. So, without further ado, number one. The doorbell rang and after unwrapping this particular unit it comes in a small white box containing the pedal, stick-on strips for feet, a quick start guide and a TC sticker. And if you so desire you can register your purchase on the TC Electronics website. TC Electronics is a Danish company and it needs very little introduction as they began selling guitar pedals around 1976 and they are well known for their build quality. Now, the TC Spark Mini Booster pedal, it comes in a, an off-white finish and uh, it requires a 9-volt adapter or a suitable power supply. Uh, do see my reviews on the Cheox power supply and my pedal board videos if you want more detail on that topic. As you can see, it's a very simple pedal with one control knob labelled Level, which adjusts the gain volume. And of course, you have the foot switch on and off and an LED lamp which illuminates when on. You have the standard input output quarter inch jack sockets. Once again, all very sturdy in construction. Nice little pedal. Now, there's a little more to the on off switch than meets the eye, and TC Electronics calls this the prime time function. And that can be used for brief solos and licks that only last a few seconds. So to engage prime time, you hold down the pedal's foot switch to disengage, release the foot switch and during prime time, the boost will be on and as soon as you release your foot from the switch, the, the boost will turn itself off again. Now, if you're using a pedal board and particularly if you use uh, overdrive pedals, placement of a booster pedal is down to what you're looking for. Now, some folks like to have the the booster before an overdrive pedal and some prefer after it. What's the difference? Well, the online manual, it states that if you have the booster before an overdrive pedal, then the spark booster will act as a gain booster. And if you place the booster after an overdrive pedal, the spark booster acts as a volume booster. Now, the main reason I purchased this was to help give my single coil pickup guitars to give them that extra bit of body to the tone. I'll also test the Spark Booster with humbucking pickups. Uh, as you can see here, I've got a, a Gibson 339. So to begin, with the guitar connected to the pedal and the pedal connected to an amplifier with the foot switch off, the guitar signal is unaffected as the pedal has a true bypass feature. In other words, the guitar sounds exactly as if it were plugged straight into the amplifier. Now that's something that you might need to bear in mind when using inexpensive or older technology effects pedals uh, because some can degrade your signal. So something to watch out for. So number two, what does it do to the sound? Well, I'm using this Custom Shop Fender Stratocaster Late 64 with Fat 60s pickups. And I've set this Blackstar Studio 10 6L6 with next to no gain. Now, just enough. Uh, to allow the master volume to actually operate. Now the tone is set to a middle of the road tone 
uh, there's a good amount of reverb to help out the dry recording and I'll be turning the level knob on the Spark Booster from left to right. Now, as you would expect, there is no effect with the level at zero. Nine o'clock. Twelve o'clock. Three o'clock. Fool. Quite straightforward. You can hear it simply acts as a clean volume boost. Now, I'm now going to set the Black Star with the gain to 12 o'clock and once again turning the level knob on the Spark Booster from left to right. Now, with the pedal set at zero, you're going to hear the level of overdrive tone from the Black Star amplifier first. Nine o'clock. Twelve o'clock. Three o'clock. Fool. regarding how I go about using and setting the controls on both my amplifier and the pedal. But before I do that, for those who use humbucking guitars, I'm now going to use this Gibson ES339 with 57 Classic Plus humbuckers. And uh, as we have already uh, understood uh, what the clean volume sounds like, we'll just keep the Blackstar Studio 10 um, at the, the gain setting of 12 o'clock. And once again, turning the level knob on the Spark Booster from left to right. Now again, at zero, once again, we hear the overdrive tone from the Black Star amplifier. Nine o'clock. o'clock. Three o'clock. three points of interest well like any other piece of equipment everyone will have their own reasons for using a given product and setting up in accordance with your own needs for my own preferences when using the Stratocaster with single coils uh, I find for me the sweet spot for getting that crunch tone with a level of tonal clarity is when I set the gain on the Black Star somewhere between 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock with the Spark Booster also being set somewhere between 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock. Now, depending on what I'm looking for, I find that that's the kind of area I'll tend to hover around. Adding an overdrive pedal, such as a Tube Screamer, that just takes things to uh, another level and can do so without causing the tonal quality to become too muddy. But again, you do need to uh, adjust a given overdrive pedal if you're going to have a booster uh, switched on. In the past, playing at high volumes back in the 70s and early 80s, uh, my go-to setup was a valve head Marshall or Laney uh, modified with custom built-in attenuation. 
driven through uh, perhaps one or two uh, 4x12 cabinets playing a Gibson SG standard with distortion pickups. So you could say I never really felt the need to look into boost pedals. Now, as I return to playing and recording guitar with uh, some of my guitars being single coil and playing through little combo amplifiers at lower volumes, uh, I now had a problem trying to get an overdrive tone that sounded authentic or perhaps um, organic is maybe another description. I find myself juggling the controls on overdrive pedals and gain controls on the little combo amplifiers, just not often uh, getting that elusive tone uh, that I was seeking. Now, I'm not trying to emulate a sound from those times, but I did appreciate that classic valve crunch that you get from an old Marshall stack driven at high volumes. And so, number four, my likes and dislikes. What do I like? Well, using the Blackstar Studio 10 6L6 is for me a very good starting platform to get that crunch tone. And, uh, and I find in the case of a Stratocaster, as I mentioned, the sweet spot for getting that crunch tone with a level of tonal clarity is when I set both the gain on the Blackstar and the level on the Spark Booster somewhere between 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock. Uh, I can get a very convincing, uh, crunchy overdrive that retains tonal clarity, and I really do like that uh, a lot. And uh, as for placement on my pedal board, I put it before my overdrive pedals. Now, I've not owned this pedal for long, but I am confident it should last well, considering the good reputation of the company. So what don't I like? Well, I don't use the level control at maximum. Uh, in my tests with my gear, I find that as soon as you go near three o'clock, the tone sounds as though it's compressing certain frequencies and it sounds a bit flubby. Now, some folks might like that, but it's not for me. Other than that, it's a very useful pedal. And no, nobody paid me to review this. So, five, my final remarks. Conclusion. Not much to say really uh, for the money. It's a great little pedal. It's very simple to use. TC Electronics does, um, does have a more elaborate version of this with more controls to play with. But for me, uh, the less controls to fiddle with is good. Simple is good. So if you're not familiar with boost pedals, uh, other than the ability to increase a clean volume, and if you're trying to get that cranked valve amp sound, uh, at bedroom volumes, then it's a pedal that you might want to try out. Um, having the right kind of amplifier with a bit of overdrive in it, though, it is important as well. So, being a new year, I've had a number of folks get in touch with me and uh, I'm going to be working on a number of videos. Uh, however, until then, in the next video, we do some more unboxing and this time another iconic guitar. But uh, sadly, one that should never have passed quality control. Please do subscribe, hit the bell to get notifications, like, share and so on, as it really helps the channel out. And I do appreciate it. Once again, do look out uh, for my channel playlist, where you find my guitar video series, which covers my journey back to playing and recording guitar after a 40 year break. So lots of stuff on guitars, amplifiers, pedals, and my ongoing journey uh, recording as well. So thank you to those who take the time to comment or chat. I always take time to engage with folks who take time to comment. So until next time, the journey continues. Do take care. Mm -hmm.